Good morning. I am Deacon Greg here at St. Paul's Episcopal Church in Beloit, Wisconsin. And we thank you for joining us this morning for morning prayer, which will begin on page 78 in the Book of Common Prayer. If you have one, if not, you can go to bcponline.org, go to daily offices and look at morning prayer and you can find it there. Also a reminder, our Psalms for today are Psalm 146 and 147. And also letting you know, we have a church app, One Church. So if you download the app, it can give you access to St. Paul's for prayer requests, for looking at our ministries and for online giving. We will begin on page 78. Send out your light and your truth, that they may lead me and bring me to your holy hill and to your dwelling. Let us confess our sins against God and our neighbor. Most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry and we humbly repent. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us and forgive us, that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your name. Amen. <clears throat> Almighty God, have mercy on us. Forgive us all our sins through our Lord Jesus Christ. Strengthen us in all goodness, and by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep us in eternal life. Amen. Lord, open our lips and our mouths shall proclaim your praise. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. The earth is the Lord's, for he has made it. Come, let us adore him. We'll continue with the Jubilate on page 82. Be joyful in the Lord, all you lands. Serve the Lord with gladness and come before his presence with a song. Know this, the Lord himself is God, for he himself has made us and we are his. We are his people and the sheep of his pasture. Enter his gates with thanksgiving. Go into his courts with praise. Give thanks to him and call upon his name. For the Lord is good, his mercy is everlasting, and his faithfulness endures from age to age. The Psalms for this morning are Psalms 146 and 147. If you have a book of common prayer, they begin on page 803. Alleluia, praise the Lord, O my soul. I will praise the Lord as long as I live. I will sing praises to my God while I have my being. Put not your trust in rulers, nor in any child of earth, for there is no help in them. When they breathe their last, they return to earth, and in that day their thoughts perish. Happy are they who have the God of Jacob for their help, whose hope is in the Lord their God, who made heaven and earth, the seas and all that is in them, who keeps his promise forever, who gives justice to those who are oppressed, and food to those who, are, who hunger. The Lord sets the prisoners free. The Lord opens the eyes of the blind. 
The Lord lifts up those who are bowed down. The Lord loves the righteous. The Lord cares for the stranger. He sustains the orphan and widow, but frustrates the way of the wicked. The Lord shall reign forever. Your God, O Zion, throughout all generations. Alleluia. Alleluia. How good is it to sing praises to our God. How pleasant it is to honor him with praise. The Lord rebuilds Jerusalem. He gathers the exiles of Israel. He heals the brokenhearted and binds up their wounds. He counts the number of the stars and calls them all by their names. Great is our Lord and mighty in power. There is no limit to his wisdom. The Lord lifts up the lowly, but casts the wicked to the ground. Sing to the Lord with thanksgiving. Make music to our God upon the harp. He covers the heavens with clouds and prepares rain for the earth. He makes grass to grow upon the mountains and green plants to serve mankind. He provides food for flocks and herds and for the young ravens when they cry. He is not impressed by the might of a horse. He has no pleasure in the strength of a man. But the Lord has pleasure in those who fear him and those who await his gracious favor. Worship the Lord, O Jerusalem. Praise your God, O Zion. For he has strengthened the bars of your gates. He has blessed your children within you. He has established peace on your borders. He satisfies you with the finest wheat. He sends out his command to the earth, and his word runs very swiftly. He gives snow like wool. He scatters hoarfrost like ashes. He scatters his hail like breadcrumbs. Who can stand against his cold? He sends forth his word and melts them. He blows with his wind and the waters flow. He declares his word to Jacob, his statutes and his judgments to Israel. He has, done, he has not done so to any other nation. To them he has not revealed his judgments. Alleluia. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. The reading today is from the Gospel of Matthew. Once more, Jesus spoke to them in parables, saying, The kingdom of heaven may be compared to a king who gave a wedding banquet for his son. He sent his slaves to call those who were invited to the wedding banquet, but they would not come. Again, he sent other slaves, saying, Tell those who have been invited, Look, I have prepared my dinner, my oxen and my fat calf have been slaughtered, and everything is ready. Come to the wedding banquet. But they made light of it and went away, one to his farm, another to his business, while the rest seized the slaves, mistreated them, and killed them. The king was enraged. He sent his troops, destroying those murderers, and burning their city. Then he said to his slaves, the wedding is ready, but those invited are not worthy. Go therefore into the main streets and invite everyone you find to the wedding banquet. Those slaves went out into the streets and gathered all whom they found, both good and bad. So the wedding hall was filled with guests. But when the king came in to see the guests, he noticed a man who was not wearing a wedding robe. And he said to him, friend, how did you get in here without a wedding robe? And he was speechless. Then the king said to the attendants, bind him hand and foot and throw him into the outer darkness where there will be weeping and gnashing of teeth 
for many are called, but few are chosen. Here ends the reading. Yesterday, we celebrated the anniversary of our independence from England. We commemorate the signing of the Declaration of Independence, the beginning of the United States, this great experiment in democracy. As today's gospel says, go therefore into the main streets and invite everyone you find to the wedding banquet. They went out into the streets and gathered all whom they found. This is what America is. Americans are people from all over the world who are gathered here to be part of this great country. We have been invited to the wedding feast, but not everyone has a place of honor. Not all are treated equally. This is what America is. Unfortunately, we have also rewritten our history hiding those things that we do not want to remember. Our country began with violence, the genocide of the Native Americans who already lived here. We removed them from their land, killed them as they fought for their survival. We forced them to live on the worst land in this country. We broke promise after promise and treaty after treaty. We gave them blankets with the smallpox virus to kill them off and be able to deny our actions. We have tried to destroy their culture and their spirit. We treat them no better today. The reservations are the poorest areas of this country. We have not provided the health care or housing that we have promised. There was $8 billion in the first COVID aid package for Native Americans. And as of a couple of weeks ago, not a single penny has been released. This is what America is. On July 3rd, I watched part of the peaceful protest going on in the Keystone, South Dakota area, where the Native Americans have been standing on their own property by treaty and have been arrested on their own land while they were standing there peacefully. We've listened to a recorded video from Right Side Broadcasting who claimed the violence that is going on was the cause by Native Americans. But the only violence we could see through their cameras was caused by law enforcement against peaceful people. They're calling it a riot, but there was nothing happening. They are again condemning the Native Americans for standing up for their rights, their constitutional rights, and are being harassed by the police. Native American reservations are sovereign nations. The government continues to invade the sovereign nations, damaging and destroying sacred lands and burial grounds. This is another case of police and government brutality and overstepping their bounds to the illegal oppression of the native people. This is what America is. This country was built on slavery. We still deny people their freedom and dignity they deserve. The first police forces were the slave hunters searching for the escaped slaves. We fought a silver war over slavery. The government compensated the owners, but gave nothing to the now freed slaves to set them free and to allow them to start a new life. Then we immediately created the Black Code and soon after the Jim Crow laws and maintained segregation and poverty. And for example, they prevented the sharecroppers from getting paid the same as white farmers for their crops. When they tried to improve their standard of living, we burned down their property and lynched them, or like in the Elaine race massacres, murdered them by the hundreds and threw even more in prison for the three white men killed 
probably by friendly fire. African Americans still live under the fear of violence and domestic terrorism today. This is what America is. Even before the coronavirus, on average 700 people a day die in this country because of the effects of low wages and poverty. And yet, we do little to change that. We tell them to pick themselves up by their bootstraps, but we keep them from being able to afford the boots or, or allowing them to go to the stores to get them. Or we steal their boots once they have them. Or when they reach down and try to grab the bootstraps, we kick them over. Where the wealthiest three people have more money than the bottom 50% of this country combined and where the wealth gap continues to grow. The American dream is only a dream. This is what America is. We segregate those who are different from us because they might threaten our white privilege. We murder them because they are different. We create laws and enforce them differently for people of color, the indigenous and the LGBTQ plus communities and for new immigrants, those who are different from us. Law enforcement officers are arresting, assaulting, using excessive force and killing those who are different from us. For example, we gave a white woman who bribed a test administrator to cheat on her daughter's SAT exam 14 days in jail. But a black woman who was homeless, who lied about where she lived so her child could go to a better school, is sentenced to five years in jail. And her daughter ended up in the foster care system. This is what America is. Thousands of people have died fighting for the right to vote for everyone. First, for all white men, not just the property owners. Then for black men. And finally, 75 years later, for women. But it wasn't until the Voting Rights Act in 1965 that all could really vote. Now the majority of eligible voters don't even bother to vote because they don't like the candidates. They don't agree with either political party because no one has talked about what they care about or say my vote doesn't count or for some other reason. Your vote does matter. The 19th Amendment allowing women to vote passed the House by one vote. The Senate by two, and the last state to ratify it by one vote. Your vote does matter. All citizens have the right to vote, but I think it goes further than that. We have the responsibility to vote as a citizen. This is what America is. But in spite of all the bad things, we persevere. America is also people and groups throughout history that have fought for the rights of others. Many have given their health and their lives doing so. Many groups and organizations have come and gone, but many are still around today. The suffrage movement began in 1848 and changed and morphed into the League of Women Voters and many other organizations in 1920. An army formed in 1865, creation in 1869, the NAACP in 1909, and the Anti-Defamation League at that same time. The ACLU began in 1920. The Episcopal Relief and Development grew out of the Presiding Bishops Fund in 1940. The Southern Poverty Law Center began in 1971. The Equal Justice Initiative in 1989. The Poor People's Campaign, started by Martin Luther King in 1965, is being resurrected across this country now. 
The Leadership Conference on Civil and Human Rights formed in 1950 to form a coalition of groups and organizations fighting for civil and human rights. They started with 30 member groups and organizations and have grown to over 200 today. The Declaration for American Democracy is a coalition of over 150 groups and organizations. And this is just to name a few. There are hundreds more. This is also what America is. Americans rally whenever there is a natural disaster or a national disaster like 9-11. We pull together, forget about our differences and work to help those in need. This is what America is. The church has reached out to those in need and shared what God has given us and been his hands feet and voice in the world. They have gone into the world to share the love of God. This is what America is. Americans are people from all over the world who are gathered here to be part of this great country. They have been invited to the wedding feast. Everyone has a seat. This is what America is. We cannot ignore our past as it affects our present and our future. America is not perfect. In fact, there is a long way to go for this country to become the land of the free, where all people are equal. The preamble of the Constitution reads, we the people of the United States, in order to form a more pure, perfect union, establish justice ensure domestic tranquility, provide for the common defense, promote the general welfare, and secure the blessings of liberty to ourselves and our posterity. Do ordain and establish this Constitution for the United States of America. This is what America should be. It was their vision, but it has still not been achieved. This is what America truly should be, where everyone is equal. There is equal justice. There is tranquility, freedom. Our constitutional rights are honored, where we fulfill our responsibilities to the country and each other, where everyone has what they need today and in the future, and where we all pull together to make sure this happens. This is what America should be. The church is a perfect place for social justice to continue and expand. Jesus has called us to love our neighbors, those who are not like us, as ourselves, people like us. We have been called to care for the poor, the sick, the oppressed, the orphans, those imprisoned, to seek justice and respect the dignity of everyone. If the church goes into the world with the grace of God, marvelous things can really happen. This is what America should be. On this holiday weekend, think about what this country would be if we lived up to the preamble of the Constitution. We followed the teachings of Jesus and if we all loved our neighbors as ourselves. God bless America. Amen. Our prayers continue with Canticle 15, the Song of Mary, on page 91. My soul proclaims the greatness of the Lord. My spirit rejoices in God, my Savior, for he has looked with favor on his lowly servant. From this day, all generations will call me blessed. 
The Almighty has done great things for me, and holy is his name. He has mercy on those who fear him in every generation. He has shown the strength of his arm. He has scattered the proud in their conceit. He has cast down the mighty from their thrones and has lifted up the lowly. He has filled the hungry with good things, and the rich he has sent away empty. He has come to the help of his servant Israel, for he has rem remembered his promise of mercy, the promise he made to our fathers, to Abraham and his children forever. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Continue with the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins, as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial, and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, forever, now and forever. Amen. Suffrages be. Save your people, Lord, and bless your inheritance. Govern and uphold them now and always. Day by day we bless you. We praise your name forever. Lord, keep us from all sin today. Have mercy on us, Lord, have mercy. Lord, show us your love and mercy. For we put our trust in you. And you, Lord, is our hope. And we shall never hope in vain. O oh God, you have taught us to keep all your commandments by loving you and our neighbor. Grant us the grace of your Holy Spirit, that we may be devoted to you with our whole heart and united to one another with pure affection. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. O oh God, you make us glad with the weekly remembrance of the glorious resurrection of your Son, our Lord. Give us this day such blessing through our worship of you, that the week to come may be spent in your favor. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. O oh God, you have made of one blood all the peoples of the earth, and sent your blessed Son to preach peace to those who are far off and to those who are near. Grant that people everywhere may seek after you and find you. Bring the nations into your fold. Pour out your spirit upon all flesh and hasten the coming of your kingdom through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. We now invite you to hold silence together with us as we pray for the many things that are on our hearts. If you have any intercessions or petitions or if you have any prayers of thanksgivings that you would like to offer up, we invite you to do so now. All this we ask through Jesus Christ, our Lord. 
Almighty God, you have given us grace at this time with one accord to make our common supplication to you. And you have promised through your well-beloved Son that when two or three are gathered together in his name, you will be in the midst of them. Fulfill now, O Lord, our desires and petitions as may be best for us, granting us in this world knowledge of your truth and in the age to come, life everlasting. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Alleluia. Alleluia. Thanks be to God. Alleluia. 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 May the God of hope fill us with all joy and peace in believing through the power of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Thank you for praying with us today. God bless. Stay safe.